Voxnail has a new camera and VTX combo. It's called the Moonlight. It finally offers recording to the SD card has two antennas and we all know that two is better than one. And what's also extremely important, it finally records in 4K. Let's take a look at how it's built, what it's capable of and finally let's answer the question is it worth it that's the wax nail moonline kit and if you've seen or own any other wax nail vtx you might have spotted a few differences this one is slightly different than any other previous wax nail camera and vtx first of all the moonline vtx is a dual antenna setup yes i know this is strictly a brand new thing because the avatar hd Pro kit also has the dual antenna setup, but this time they also change the form factor and the looks of the body of the VTX. This one looks not only slightly more like the DJI O3A unit, you know, this boxy shape, finally have the SD card slot. You can finally use any other micro SD, stick it into your Walksnail Moonlight VTX and then when you want to download the footage, you just take the SD card out. No need to play with those finicky USB cable the Walksnail was using before. That's definitely a step forward in the right direction with a teeny tiny step back. But we're gonna talk about the step back in a moment. And besides that, it's the VTX. It has the connector to connect to your flight controller, two LEDs that indicates recording and the working of the VTX, as well as the binding button. And on the top you get the cable to connect to the Moonlight camera itself. What's interesting, camera on the side is equipped with those yellow pads. They are rubber and they are designed to help to keep the camera stable in the bracket, as well as probably to absorb at least some of the high frequency vibrations that might be fed from the frame to the camera. Of course, it can be discussed of how much effect those tiny rubber pads actually have, but I suppose it's better than nothing. And as the super nice feature together with the Moonline kit, you also get the ND8 and the filter. It's a pretty simple put on design that is held purely by friction, but I suppose if you do not crush the drone very hard on the very specific angle, the ND filter should be held tightly in place. It's really not that simple to remove it once it's tightly around the camera body. This ND filter can be a super nice touch, especially when it comes in the box. And from the outside, that's almost all about the Walksnail Moonlight Kit. Almost. Because there is one more thing I have to talk about. This VTX has a very interesting design choice. If you ask me, I think it's only due to the fact that they added the SD card slot and have not modified all the internals. Next to the SD card slot there are two ports. In the normal configuration you do not have to connect absolutely anything to those. You just install this thing in the drone, connect all the cables, plug in the battery and you can fly. However, if you want to update the firmware on the Moonlight VTX, first you have to put the firmware on the SD card, which is kind of obvious, but then you have to use the special cable that is provided with the Moonlight and bridge those two connectors. Because of the very small form factors of the connectors, it can be a finicky process. You have to install this cable that probably bridges something between two completely separate boards, put the card with the firmware into the slot, power everything, press and hold the binding button for eight seconds, and only then the Moonlight VTX will upgrade the firmware. Without this cable installed, the firmware upgrade process will not work. So better do not fly with this cable installed, not that you can't, it will work, but you do not want to lose the small cable in case you will want to upgrade the firmware in the future. That's the Walksnail Moonlight. So far, so good. Still, the most important question, 
what about the image quality and how well this camera and the VTX combo performs in flight? First of all, I do regret that the walk snail presented this camera here when it's winter on the northern hemisphere. I had to wait almost one month to get one day of relatively sunny weather. And even then, when there was sun, there is still a problem that there is basically no color besides brown. So how it handles green I have no idea because nothing around is green but what do we see? In my opinion, camera handles browns and blues, those two colors that you can see in this footage, in a relatively nice way. White balance and brightness seems to be accurate to the external conditions. However, image seems to be slightly choppy, which was especially visible anytime I was trying to record anything in the 30 FPS, especially 4K 30 FPS even with the ND filter in Installed. I think the Moonlight sensor is so light sensitive that even though it's using the ND filter, it still has to capture the image on the relatively rather short shutter speed. And that unfortunately means choppiness. Most probably it would be better if Walksnail shipped the Moonlight with the ND16 or the ND32. Believe it or not, but on the sunny day, ND8 is usually not enough to have long enough shutter to have this well at least slight motion blur. But okay, it's just an accessory. In terms of image quality, especially relative to other cameras available like the DJI O3 or good quality action cameras, I decided I will not make that comparison. External condition lights and colors just are not good enough to be able to make a good comparison this time of the year. But I will go back to this topic as soon as the trees will have some leaves and the grass will be green. On the topic of the image quality, there is one more thing we have to discuss, and this is jello. I find the moonlight, well, very jello sensitive. On exactly the same setup, I'm running my DJI, the walk snail moonlight had a visible jello. Not that it was that bad or that extensive that it makes the whole footage, well, unusable, but if you look carefully, you will see some jello. I contacted Walksnail about that and their advice used to just use hard mounting to the frame. No soft mounting bracket, no TPU cases, just install tightly the camera directly on the frame and this should help. And you know what? In fact, it did. So when using Walksnail Moonlight, remember to hard mount it to the frame and be careful because this camera just seems to be quite sensitive to jello. Overall, I think the Moonlight is a nice step forward from the existing VTXs and cameras available for the Walksnail digital FPV system. It's just better than anything else available for the Walksnail. For me, the biggest improvements are the recording on the SD card and of course recording in the 4K even up to 60 frames per second. Of course, we cannot forget about some of the problems this camera and VTX combo is facing. First of all, like we discussed before, it's quite sensitive to jello, but it doesn't stop over here. It likes to overheat, so be careful when working with this thing on your workbench. You have to provide the active cooling so that it doesn't shut down. When it's hot, it's almost impossible to remove the SD card. It's so tight. And finally, this cable you have to connect to be able to update the firmware on the VTX. Ah, not really the best solution ever. Still, if you want to improve the recording capabilities of your Walksnake, equipped drones, the Moonlight definitely goes in the right direction, of course as long as you do not intend to use any external action cameras, which will offer better recording. Oh, and by the way, I almost forgot, if you got the Moonlight, do remember to update firmware to the latest version ASAP. They are fixing issues and problems all the time with the firmware updates, and from what I know, the original firmware that the 
the cameras might be shipped in the very beginning, well, had some problems. So the latest firmware all the time. By the way, this is not the last video about the walk snail moonlight. The next one will be about flying in the low light conditions. But to know when the video goes out, you do have to remember to subscribe to the channel and of course enable notifications. Here's the next video you should watch. In the meantime, this was the FPV University. I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying!